This is One on One. For the first time, Lisa Eve is Verizon's uh, Vice President of State Government Affairs, New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure to be here. For the first time, a one on one at the beautiful New Jersey Performing yes, Arts Center. Yes, yes, yes. Exciting. It's not a bad place, huh? It's a wonderful place. Now, you have a background in government yes, before I do. you came to uh, Verizon, right? Describe that. Uh, well, I worked for two former United States senators, uh, one named Joe Biden, uh, many, many years ago uh, in the early 2000s for then Senator Clinton. And most recently, I served as the chief uh, economic development advisor to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Worked for the state's uh, highest court and spent a lot of time in public service, but it's incredibly exciting to be a member of the Verizon family. Talk about it, because people, I mean, Verizon has been a long time, <clears throat> good, solid corporate citizen, if you will, and an underwriter of public broadcasting, full disclosure. Folks know that. Plus, they see you at one of the spots right now for our sister station on NJTV. Yes. Um, Verizon, people think it is, oh, that's the cell phone company. So much more than that. What is Verizon? Oh, it's so much more than that. We're a telephone company. We're a telecommunications company. We're an innovation company. I mean, one of the things that I have been learning, I'm new to telecom. I'm new to Verizon. And it's an exciting time to be a part of this industry and in particular part of this company. One of the things I learned was by 2017, for every person on the planet, there's going to be three network devices. That's extraordinary. Go back again. Billions of by 2017? Devices. 2017, there'll be three network for devices for every person on the planet. And so a lot of that comes from machine to machine technology, you know, wireless um, uh, devices embedded in our transportation systems and other types of communication systems. But that's extraordinary. So, yes, we are a wireless company, we are a wireline company, but we're an innovation company. Your predecessor, Jim Gerace. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me, was with us a while back before this transition. We're talking about, uh, he actually brought in a device mm -hmm. and demonstrated it right on the air. And what's so am amazing to me as we talk about this is you would think, okay, so it's a, it's a situation where Verizon's competing with other companies and they're out in the marketplace and, you know, that's what it is. No, but there are regulatory issues. There's, that's why there's a state government affairs operation. Yes. Like what? Like what do you have to interface with the government about? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because having come from government, I understand the role the government plays. I've spent most of my professional career in government, and I understand that there's, you know, a need for government in certain areas and certain circumstances to, you know, focus on uh, customer needs. But at the same time, and I say this as someone who spent almost in her entire professional career in government, you know, government... Uh, doesn't create jobs, companies do. And the role of government is to be a partner uh, with corporations like Verizon, uh, to not stand in our way, not try you know, to tie our hand behind our back, but let us do what we do. Let us keep investing. Give let us, us keep innovating. Well, you know, for example, we spent just in the past five years alone, $4 billion in the state of New Jersey alone on our wireline infrastructure. But we're innovating in lots of other, uh, other ways. And uh, 20 states across the country, just in the past few years alone, have significantly, have significantly revised and improved um, their regulatory uh, laws, their rules, their regulations, their statutes to, yes, you know, be consistent with whatever the state agency or government's role may be in terms of oversight, but really to, to have those rules and those regulations and those statutes keep up, the, keep up with the time so that Verizon <coughs> and our competitors, frankly, in those other states can continue to innovate, can, can continue to compete. If they don't, what happens? Well, if they don't, I mean, frankly, that's not good for any of our competitors in the industry. But it's not good for, for Verizon. And it's not good for consumers. It's not good for consumers. So, um, you know, I've had a chance just in the very short time that I've been in this role. Uh, I can't tell you how excited, uh, how excited I am to be a member of the Verizon family. I've had a chance to interface with a number of the policy leaders and elected officials in the, in the state. And I know they're going to be great partners in helping us move New Jersey forward. Mm. Um, um, we're not talking about no regulation, but we are talking about bringing regulation into the 21st century to help mm -hmm. us uh, continue to do what we do best, which is innovate and invest. And as you said, it's good for our customers and it's good for all New Jerseyans. Lisa, let's do this because everyone who comes um, and sits in that chair yes. comes here to one on one. While there's a component that lets them talk about their art, their craft, mm -hmm. um, some of them perform. <clears throat> which you're refusing to do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, 
there's a part of this series which is unlike Capital Report, which is a public policy program, which part of this discussion could have wound up there, but this is what's different. We want to know about the individual. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know something about your background. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in the great city of Buffalo, uh, which reminds me a lot of Newark uh, because I've spent some time in Newark. Actually, I spend most of my work week right here in Newark uh, at our office at 540 Broad Street, right down the right street. Right up the street. And uh, have become very much immersed in lots of things here in New Jersey. I'm a member now of the NJPAC board, right. involved in Choose New Jersey on the board of uh, Choose New, New Jersey, Jersey. Uh, Tracy McDaniel? Yes, right. yes, yes. Met with Tracy, was actually one of the very per first people with whom I met uh, when I joined Verizon. And I'm also a member of the board of directors of the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. So it's an extraordinary time for me, uh, for the company, which I'm so proud to, to be a member. But it's funny how Newark, in so many wonderful ways reminds me of my hometown kind of an old industrial town lots of different ethnic communities it's constantly changing has had some trying times but clearly uh, just like my hometown Newark without question I've seen that in the few months that I've had a chance to to work here that the worst days are definitely behind uh, lots of wonderful things are exciting Verizon has been a part of many mm. of those wonderful things and will continue to be and uh, as I said I probably spend more time in Newark uh, that I do uh, in any other uh, city in any of the three states for which I'm responsible. Did, did you know, it's so interesting, as you talk about the position you have right now as Vice President of State Government Affairs, uh, Verizon, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, but also Homeland Security Advisor and uh, Counsel for Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. and then uh, with Vice President Joe Biden when he was in the Senate. He was the ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, you were Correct. right there with him, and also the Chief Economic Development Advisor for New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Curious, yes. was that the plan? Oh, gosh, it wasn't <laughs> That's where plan. I'm going here. I'm trying to figure out how the heck you wind up. Because a lot of people, you ever have people come up to you and say, I want to do what you do? Oh, my gosh. And they have no yeah. idea. You know, some, some young people do, and they say, you know, how do I get to be yes. where you are? That's First what I of mean. all, this was not a grand plan. <laughs> Listen, I grew up um, the daughter of two extraordinary people, both of whom were public servants. My dad actually was an elective office in New York State for 36 years. My really? mother was a teacher uh, for 33 public years. Public service. Public service uh, uh, in spades, uh, extraordinary public servants, fabulous parents to boot. Um, and they taught me, you know, to use all the gifts that God has given you, right? And to take advantage and be the best that you can be. So I was a pretty good student at school. I uh, went to public schools all the way, you know, through uh, kindergarten, elementary school, high school. I tried to do my best and always tried to follow my passions. That's what I tell all young people. Don't focus on... Um, well, should I have this major? Should I take this job? Whatever you decide to do, whatever you decide to study, just be the best at it and make sure it's something that you want to do. Life is too short. What was your passion? You know, I have to tell you, government, um, history, but I was also actually a music minor at Smith College. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, after, but I'm not singing. Hold on, wait a minute, hold I'm on. I'm not singing. After we did this whole thing about music, you were... No, I was a music minor in college, but I didn't have any great gifts. <laughs> What I did have when I was in college and what I still have today is a, an extraordinary love of music and the arts in general, which is why, frankly, uh, I'm so proud to represent Verizon on the NJPAC board, mm. but frankly, on a personal level, I'm pumped uh, to be part of all the great things that NJPAC is doing and will do in the future. You're very good at bringing it back. <laughs> on message, I like that, and also, oh. but but also true though, yeah. because this place. Yeah. I mean, it's no accident. We were John Schreiber, who actually kicked off this one-on-one -on -one series at NJ Pack, and it's been our partner for a long time. He gets it. He understands mm -hmm. that it's not enough for them to do great things here, but they're trying to get the message out there right. as well, and having important having board members who understand that as well. Yes. Lisa, I want to thank you for being with us. First time one-on-one. -on -one. Don't let it be the last. Uh, she is the uh, Vice President for State Government Affairs for Verizon in New Jersey, yes. New York, and Connecticut, and uh, a music minor in college. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, Steve. So it was a great. pleasure to be with you. Thank you. It was fun. That was, that was fun. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Barnabas Health, TD Bank,
New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Josh S. Weston, Cone Resnick, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. This program has been made possible in part by Franklin Templeton Investments.